Welcome back to the Oh So Spurs podcast, where Ange Postacoglu may have received a slightly bloody nose from his last game. He looks to come back with a right hook and knock his doubters down to the canvas. But he has a big challenge in front of him. He faces West Ham, a side we haven't beaten in two years, not since Antonio Conte was our manager. Um, a big game, guys, and we'll be talking about that, but also some positive injury news going around the club at the moment, which is good. Looks like we've only got one player out injured right now. We'll also be touching on that Ange presser and, yeah, wrapping up with a quick prediction of the scores. So with us to discuss it all today, we have the regular crew in Stu. How are you, mate? Very good, mate. Good to see you all again after a couple of weeks. <laughs> good to see you too. We have Sai. How are you, mate? I'm not, mate. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Good. And we have Johnny and his little companion. How are you, Johnny? I'm I'm great. Thanks, Jim. I'm just about able to talk about Tottenham again after what happened the last time. So, this is Benji, by the way. <laughs> it's it's been Benji. hard. Benji. Eric Spurs has got his uh, Spurs collar on. <laughs> oh, good man. <laughs> it has been hard to muster the strength to get that enthusiasm back but it, the bug's back the, the stadium lights are back on Stu it's going to be a tough game though isn't it what, how are you feeling about this one going into this game yeah I think Ange has not yet managed to find a way to beat them either in the league or in a friendly so already that doesn't bode well 12.30 kickoffs it, it might be my memory oh. but we seem to struggle every single time we have the early kickoff yeah. no matter who the manager is and of course you know some of our players only just came back and had one day training with with the side so I mean the, the signs are not great but got to keep positive hopefully Ange and the players have had two weeks to stew over that awful second half a collapse and they're raring to go in, in a derby to, to put things right Sorry, Ange said I think his exact words were I've been sitting on this for 10 days and I'm ready yeah. to explode ready to explode written down yeah definitely do you think they deserve an Ange explosion and do you expect yeah, it to get a well, reaction? I think if Ange wants to explode, then Ange can explode. He can do whatever he wants. Um, I wonder also about over that international break about those that weren't on duty. So Sonny didn't go, he didn't go anywhere, did he? No. no. And Madison didn't go anywhere. I wonder if there was some sort of heart to heart stuff going on over those two weeks with some of those players that were stayed behind. But did they need a good kick up the arse after that? Absolutely. That second half display was, was atrocious. So they need something, and I, I think he, we need to see a reaction, and he's expecting a reaction from the players on the on the back of that. For him to come out in public and say that that was the, probably the most disappointing game of his tenure, mm -hmm. I think that the players owe it to him to 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 uh, have a reaction. Yeah, hundred percent. At home, I know it's a twelve thirty kickoff. We don't like him. It means we're getting to the ground at about half eleven. Pre lunchtime drinking is. It's got good and bad sides to it, so <laughs> we'll see. It's yeah, it, I'd never like these games either. They're always horrible games, and uh, we'll come on to the style of play a little bit later about how we think things are going to go. But I've never, never been to a Tottenham West Ham game, or not one that I can remember for a while anyway, where I've thought that's a really good, good football match. Yeah, I, is it a lot of pressure on this game? Is what I'm driving down with uh, Baz, who's a neighbour of mine, big Spurs fan. He's bringing his nephew as a as a treat and a, to cheer him up. I think they had a bit of a. Um, had a kind of accident at work that kind of meant he needed some time out for a little bit to recover. So he's brought on this ticket to cheer him up. And I feel like maybe I should have waited till we played Bournemouth before organising a ticket for someone yeah. in that circumstance. But hey, you never know. Maybe you'll be a good omen. Johnny, going to be a tough fixture, isn't it? Always is West Ham. It's their cup final, in inverted commas. But do you go in with, with hope? Not only hope, but with some genuine optimism that we're going to get our first victory against West Ham since Conte? I am hopeful. Yeah, I'm definitely hopeful. I think I, I'm. I agree with Stu about the lunchtime thing. I, I'm not sure. I didn't look into the uh, actual history there, but it just certainly feels like it's not been the best time to um, to be playing a game. I, I mean, I guess we're all in the same boat after the international break. I mean, although yes, West Ham maybe have had fewer players involved in that, uh, but it looks good from the point of view of injuries uh, are are looking much more. Um, we're, we're in a much healthier state. And that front, people have come, come through the internationals well. The football that we've played, West West Ham have been just as ropey, well, more ropey than we have. I mean, they're, they've they've have only won one of their last five league games. 
Um, so, and that's that's a home to Ipswich. No disrespect to Ipswich. So, I, I'm hopeful. I, I expect us to win. I, I, I think the players were on a good run. We did have five wins in a row. It's easy sort of to forget that um, after what happened against Brighton. And it's also, we would be fools to kind of pretend that the second half didn't happen. But um, at the same time, maybe the second half understandably is getting away more attention than the first half because the first half was the total opposite yeah. and it was unbelievable we were so good in the first half so like there's a lot to be hopeful of we're, we're, we're generally happy clappers um as others might say and i think i think it's time to be the Ange train to get back on track and uh, after that 45 minute hiatus and I think we, yeah, you say about West Ham, we've not been great recently, but like there was a few years, we seemed to like go sort of spank them quite a few times. I've been out of some of those games, we've put four past them a few times in the not too recent past. I mean, they're there for the taking. We, we've got, we were pretty much at full strength. It's going to be going to be really nice to have Sonny uh, hopefully up there on the left and Solanke and, uh, and, and the untouchable BJ with his, Going for his eight and eight, so there's a lot to be hopeful for. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel. The more I'm talking, the more positive I feel, Jim. <laughs> I just keep talking. I just, I was just smiling. I was just smiling at Johnny being labelled a happy clapper. <laughs> what are you trying if to say? If we mate? win, are we gonna all meet and? In... <laughs> If we if we win, do we us three? Should we get down to the concourse together, all hold hands and do ring a ring of roses? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> And sing, yeah, sing Kumbaya, yeah, Classic. I think that'd be good fun. Yeah, yeah. actually, something we will talk about in this pod as we very briefly is the ownership stuff with Amanda Stavely because there's been a few updates. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, go because I was thinking of happy clappers, mm. Daniel Levy lovers. You know, we get called all these things, so mm. just the ownership stuff is important. Came to mind then. Uh, so yeah, the, the, you touched on it there, Johnny. There's uh, some players returning from injury. It looks like we've only got. Odeber out and I think it was Stu, you know, not many players had international starts. Mm. We had Ficario, Porro and Van der Ven played. Romero. Is there anyone else starting for the... Bruno. Romero. So we, there should be a lot of fresh Jackson. legs. Oh, Kuliseski would have played Jackson as well, wouldn't he? So actually quite a, yeah. quite quite a few, <laughs> actually. Over half of them. Romero, yeah. <laughs> okay, take that back. But key ones like Sun and Madison um have had a rest um as has udogi so that's hmm. important right uh, does De- that destiny it... destiny play as well i thought he was rested okay. gosh i'm not <laughs> i've really kind of just invertedly figured out that this 12 30 kickoff is going to work against us more than i had <laughs> i had hoped but um should you expect any surprises in the lineup because we've got a lot no, of players I, back. Yeah, I would expect the only change uh, to be Sun on the left, which I think everybody is crying out for. I don't think anybody wants to see uh, Timo uh, start. No. I mean, he, he's done his best. I think, you Sorry. know, he, he did well getting in the right place many times. But yeah, we need someone text to be able to finish off uh, those chances. Um, so I, I think that's the only change that I would expect from, from the next, from the last few games with Benton Coeur probably. Still in the six, unless um, Biss has impressed. But yeah, that's my expectation. Sorry. The, the big one's midfield, though, Sai. Like, what are you what are you thinking we're going to be doing there? Cause that's, you never know what our strongest... Yeah, you, go on. You don't, but I think he's starting to settle on that over the last few games, right? I think he's, with Benton, Decky and Madders... I think he's got in his mind that's probably our strongest. And Benton Kerr didn't travel for Uruguay either, did he? He's suspended, right. right? So so yeah, he's right. not like he's coming back and having only one day, so he'll have been there for two weeks. I'm guessing that that with uh, with that midfield, with Matters and uh, Benton Kerr there for two weeks and then Decky coming back, I can't see him not starting those three. <laughs> Given, coming back to Johnny's point, you know, if we can forget about the second half at Brighton, which I don't think we could ever forget it. But if we can just skip past that and back to the first half, those three were amazing. It's probably the best half yeah. of football I've seen yeah. under Ange. It was, I think that's why the second half was such a contrast. I don't see any change there. Johnson on the right, without a doubt, he's on fire. He's scoring, scoring for fun at the moment. And Sonny back, and I don't see any reason to change the rest of it. I just wonder whether he would think about resting Destiny and putting Spence in there after he signed a new contract. Probably not. 
but that would be the only other one that I could see as maybe a surprise if he wanted to give Destiny a, a bit of a break after the torrid time at, that he had in the second half. That's the only thing I can think of. And Johnny, are you in agreement? Would, if you were Ange Postecoglou in the dugout, would you be looking to mix things up against no, this type of opposition? No, I wouldn't be looking to mix things up or because you... it's a derby. It's a huge game for, well, again, sound like a really patronising idiot, but like it is, you know, we say they're a cup final, right? I mean, it is, it is a really big game for West Ham. It's a big game for Tottenham as well. I know it's not like our number one derby and, you know, West Ham are not to be taken lightly. You know, they, they, they've got some really good players. The, the only other one that I would consider but would remain a doubt and will, but is Romero, given his pretty ropey form. It, you know, you sort of wonder, is there, mm. especially he's, he's just come back from South America. He's, he's the, the sort of the last one to report back in for duty. Dragason has done well. I know he had the sort of carabag thing aside with his red. Uh, anytime he's been asked to come in, he's done well. That side of defence is his side of defence. And it, it, in some ways, kind of like the idea of the message going out that there isn't mm. there isn't anyone untouchable. That you don't just because your name's Kuyi Romero and you've got a bunch of winners' medals in international football that you're some, you know, you've a divine right to a place. I would kind of like knowing what I little I know, I'd be thinking, do you know, what? I I'd quite like to send a message to Romero. And Dragerson's just come off the back of a, I think it was his first goal for um, his country as well. So Romania, oh, yeah. So. I'd kind of quite like to give him the opportunity and maybe do that. I I don't think it'll happen, but, you know, stranger things have happened, I suppose. That's the, otherwise, I'd agree with uh, Stu and Sonny. And was asked about Romero oh, right. um, in the presser, um, whether, you know, he'd been playing too much, etc. And he did mention that he thought he'd play well, but obviously he's yeah. had a few mistakes, um, but no one's more angry than, than Kuki <laughs> himself. So I, I don't think he's ready to drop him, though. No, he's not looking like he's blaming Romero is he as part of his anger no. in that last game but then I think yeah, who he is really it's a collective blame isn't it the thing but, is, um, it has happened so many yeah, times though. and I mean with all due respect 100%. I'm sure that it's sincere and everything and and Jobs isn't going to throw his players on in the bus especially in in public and it's not in his best interest to do that because he's Romero's a huge asset to have in your squad but given the number mm. of times he has messed up, it's like a kid, your kid in your class keeps doing the same stuff wrong. The fact that they keep saying sorry isn't like really doing the business, is it? You got like figure out a way around this and figure, mm. you know take take different approaches to it. So you know, fair enough. That that's what he said. I didn't see the press conference, but I just think, I think he's getting a bit of a pass when you've got somebody of a real quality replacement. And it's like we were saying before, Stu and myself were chatting there before about. Spence, which I know we'll be getting on to with the contract situation. You know, you've got players who are actually there who can come in, like in the last game for a doggy. Spence is the obvious person to bring off the bench and doesn't. And you sort of think, hmm, it is a bit of a weird one. Because um, they, they're, it's not like mm. in the past when we've had really ropey options to be bringing on. We've actually got some really good quality to be to be um, changing up with. So anyway. So we've established the lineup. Should we talk a bit about um, score predictions before we move on to the next topic? Should we go on there? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Go on then. Um, Stu, what are you thinking for this one then? Well, I was looking at the stats. Neither of us keep clean sheets. They've had a lot more shots than I was expecting, almost as many as us um, in mm. the game so far this season, although their accuracy is, is lower than ours. So I'm going to go for 2-1. BJ to keep his streak going and Sun to score the winner. Like it, so si, What are you thinking? Yeah, it's, it's a difficult one to call because I think if we really get about and we go right from right from the off, I think we could could do some damage. I think we we could put a few about them. Will we concede? To Stu's point, probably. So I, I could see this being three one. Yeah, I could see it being three one, mm-hmm. but I could also see it being one all. If I'm honest. You know, it's one mm. of those types of games where it's a really difficult one to call. Lopetegui is a very pragmatic manager. The Spanish Moyes is slightly more expressive, but but he 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 knows how to set up a team not to get beat. They're not particularly expansive away from home. They've uh, mm. tend to play like I said that pragmatic football. So it's a really difficult one to call. I'm hoping it's going to be the former of my predictions. It's going to be a three-one. We're going to get at them and get something early that opens the game up and means that they have to come to us. If they score first, 
then it's going to be a really tight, cagey game. It might be a one or two one. But I'm hoping for a 3-1. I'm going to go with Johnson scoring again. The other two, I don't mind where they come from. Johnny, you're going to round off? Uh, yeah, pretty much agree with everything the lads have just said there. And, and we have been starting games very quick out of the blocks most of most of the season. Um, and then some, some games scoring early and conceding early. So I, I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet. I was going to say 3-1, but I'm not going to copy Sai. <laughs> Even though I think we did both go for the right result in... I know when it was. was a, oh, three years ago. Uh, yeah, I know. Sorry. Keep keep put that one in the L short in the L thumbnail. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, it's like Peter Houston off there, isn't Rack it? Raconteur extraordinaire. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I'm gonna say four one because I think we I think oh. we're gonna get we are gonna get that early one. <laughs> we're gonna get another one, and uh, they'll just get a, they'll just get a consolation at the end because we'll have a stupid switch off job. But I'm gonna go with. Brennan, of course, because he's basically the world's greatest goal scorer, isn't he? I mean, and then Sonny Solanke. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to... I'm gonna... <laughs> he's even clapping his... He's clapping his... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to... Yeah, so, yeah. Brennan, Solanke, Sonny and Romero. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, Easy. 4-1 to Spurs. Spurs yeah, no. Johnny. Got right, him, Jimbo. Yeah, go on, Jim. What have you got? We got two, one, three. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I, I th- I'm going to go for a Tottenham win, and I'm going to go for a clean sheet, which is wow. madness. I know. Oh, wow. I know. Brave man. Madness. But our defense is actually a lot better statistically than yeah. he gets credit for. And yeah. I true. don't. Got. I. If I say this, he's going to score a goal. But full Krug, <laughs> they're oh, yeah. sent forward. He he's not. I'm not going to say he's. he's Oh, was he, he out injured anyway for this fixture? He was there, I was hoping yeah. he would play. Yeah, was he? Was he? Kind of like calf or okay. shin or something. Because I was hoping he'd play. Because if Antonio yeah. plays, I can already yeah. see that cross yeah. coming in above shoulder height, and big old Antonio just Come sitting there excellent. completely open and scoring. So Cootie, I'm not going to say it go Sorry, lads. Because because West Ham have their starting centre forward out injured, they will score, mm. which sounds ridiculous. But that's how I see it. If Antonio starts, they will score. So I'll go. We'll go one nil down. Everyone will start throwing the toys out the pram at twenty minutes, and we'll come Please back to win. Sheep. Oh, yeah, I've changed my mind because Fulcrug's <laughs> not going to play now. Fulcrug's not going to play now. It's going to be bloody right. Antonio, and he he's okay. great against us. All and right, he's so. he's just that he's the he's I fear him just being the perfect type of striker for against us. So I'll go three one Spurs with goals from oh. Johnson and a double from. Dominic. No, one from Slanky and one oh, from yeah, Porro. Love, love bit Double header. Okay. Love there we go. Yeah, there we go. Back on that put us back on track with some nice yeah, fixtures, true. guys. Mm. After that. We do have a nice we have a good run. And Chelsea and Arsenal mm. have got a tough run. Chelsea coming got us really bad. They run, do. Yeah. We've got yeah. Alkmaar at home on the Thursday, then Palace, who are on a bit of a slide at the mm. moment, aren't they? Yeah. I think that it's not a good sign when your manager starts saying things like, you know, what went wrong with that performance? Does that even matter when what bigger things are happening in the world right now? It's like, what? What are you want about? Yeah. Like, you're in charge to play the, like, you know what I mean? You're, it just doesn't sound like his head's in a particularly good space for Palace at the moment. And then we got um, City Should at home in the Cup. Yeah. Villa's not then, easy. Home. Villa's, Villa's, Villa's not easy. That'd be a tasty one. That's a that's really a big, tasty yeah, one. That's a big where, yeah. where big are we? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, actually, we we have a tough run coming. Then you've got City, Villa, Galatasaray, Ipswich, City, Roma. Well, a lot of those tougher games are at home. Yeah, City's at home. Yeah. Villa's at Villa's home. At home. Yeah. Then we have got Fulham and Bournemouth after that. Yeah, those are good games. It's City away on the twenty third, which is the that's yeah, anomaly that's, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's going to be a really t- like you. You pretty much write that one off, don't you? Typically, mm. not this year. Yeah. Unless yeah, we, play. Well, they're they're not really going to take that seriously. Yeah, they the care about. I don't think. I think we got. It. Well, that's the first city game we got, but then the twenty third we played in the that's league. That's away, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Twenty third in the league. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that'd be a tough one, and then comes the whole argument over: Oh, Arsenal and City are in a title race. Do we? Do we have to lose this one to help? No, I hate it's all that. too far away no. from the end of the season not, not to even November. have that conversation. Yeah, yeah. You, I'm all in winning that one. I agree. 
Cool. Last thing, a little got you. Spence. You. Spence. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to take that one, Stu? No, I just think it's um, really brilliant news. I was always a big fan of Spence, the characteristics of the player that he has, um, and I always thought he'd be brilliant under Ange. And obviously, there were issues with his attitude, which is why his Leeds loan was was cut short. He was sent home. But I think, as we discussed in the summer, he seems to have grown up uh, in his mm-hmm. time in Italy. Come back, and said in in the interview with Sky, um, he did it again in the press conference that Spence has come back with a brilliant attitude. Just made it very clear he didn't want to go out alone. He wanted to prove himself, make it at Spurs, um, and clearly that's been rewarded with the new contract. So it, it seems fantastic. It means he believes. It means the manager believes. It means the club believes. Yeah. Um, it just begs the question: if we see so much in him, why didn't we bring him on for destiny against Brighton? But yeah, it's 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 good news, and uh, I think he's just the perfect Ange player, which is what Ange said as well. That he's got all the characteristics to to fit in in one of his teams. Yeah, well said. So the only last thing is the ownership stuff, not major, but there's a really good summary on the fighting cock and the lab where Ben, who's been on our show a few times and comes on, um, is going to come on again soon to talk about. Well, we're going to bring on to talk about just normal Spurs episode, but we'll probably touch on it as well. But yeah, the long story short is there's three types of ways you can get bought out. One is minority buyout, where the person who buys a minority has no influence over decisions. They're just buying shares off the club in the hope they'll go up in value so they can sell them again. So if that happens, nothing will change. If Amanda Stavely seeks investment from the Middle East or wherever else and brings it into the club. But there's other ones where you can do sell a minority and give up um, your decision making and slowly buy more of the club, which is what Man United are doing with Jim Ratcliffe, but that's never going to happen because Daniel Levy's not going to say, yeah, you come control my assets, someone else. Because he's done for the shareholders, I'm not saying, you know, you haven't won enough trophies, blah, blah, blah. But from a shareholder perspective, and those are the people who um, will be a part of this decision, Daniel Levy's done an amazing job in terms of raising the value of the club. So they're not going to want him to relinquish control so that's never going to happen so it's probably more likely that there's a somewhere in between model where they buy into the club in the hope that they can increase our ability to spend on some things a little bit more quickly in the short term nothing dramatic but increase their share value for that with perhaps an option to buy more of the club in future and aggressively spend a bit more at that time if things go to plan. But just having that cash free would allow Spurs to go. It's not gonna it's not gonna see us bidding for Mbappe, but it's probably gonna see us being able to go, you know what, that extra twenty million quid to get that deal over line, yeah, we can do that. That money to build that extra hotel a bit more quickly so we can get a bit more revenue. Yeah, let's do that. It's more that kind oh, of thing I love to it. Does anyone else have things to add on there? But that's how I I'd read the scenarios. I thought the um the line that they said about, you know, one of the options could be like Qatar where mm-hmm. part of the mm-hmm. deal is also they pump money in with the new stadium being called Qatar Airways or something like yeah. that could be, you know, a good way of, of getting the money in. So, yeah, I think that was true. Right. Yeah, that's a key thing because they obviously called Tottenham Hotspur Stadium Tottenham Hotspur Stadium because they didn't want it to be associated to a brand. Because if someone takes over the Emirates, for example, people are still going to call it the Emirates now, so it's less appealing for sponsors. Mm-hmm. But for us, we called it Tottenham Hotspur Stadium to try and stop people calling it White Hart Lane because they didn't want everyone just to refer to it as White Hart Lane. That puts off sponsors. But also, like you say, like someone goes, yeah, I'll buy 500 million quid's worth of Spurs for a minority stake, but I also want to have the naming rights that no one else has at the moment. So maybe that's what it is. We don't expect much to change. We don't really we want the money, yeah. but we're not a club in a position where it's like really in desperate need of the cash. So it's got not, you know, we're already spending pretty much against the buffer of what we can spend at the moment with PSR and FFP. So it's like, it's a tough one. Um, yeah, we need a full buyout to see a massive shift and that's not mm-hmm. probably going to happen. So, yeah. Anyway, up the Spurs. Any other final comments, guys? Uh, no. Just looking forward to getting back to it's it tomorrow, well. boys. Yeah, I look yep. forward to seeing you there. Better yeah. win. Yeah, man. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs>